Hello, my name is Daniel Perez and I am one of the board members with Alhambra American and I'm creating this video so that I can show scorekeepers how to better keep track of pitches because pitch count is very important because Little League has very strict rules in terms of how many pitches each pitcher can throw and how many days rest they need between games. This is all in terms of protecting the arms of the players. Youth arms can be subject to a lot of damage if not limited in the number of pitches they throw. So it's very important, it's a safety issue, that the scorekeepers keep accurate counts of the pitches. And I'm going to show you a way to do that. Um, it's not the only way, it's one way, but we do need to be keeping, sh making sure that we keep accurate counts of the pitches. So I have a fictional game here that I pulled up from the internet, and I have here a scorecard that I got online. I just googled the scorecard and I downloaded this one. So we can go through this game. I'm just going to go through a half inning really quickly to show you how I keep running totals. My honest suggestion is to have someone else keep pitch count while you keep score if you feel like you're unable to do both. Uh, this way you are able to keep both the way I'm about to show you, but if it proves to be too challenging for you, ask someone to help you keep score because, like I said, it's a safety issue that we need to be aware of. So here I see the Brewers are playing the Padres. Let's pretend we are at Granada Diamond 1. Uh, let's say the start time is 7.15 and the date is 4.14. Uh, as is often the case, we might not get the lineup until five seconds before the game is about to begin. So the first thing that we are going to do is look at who's pitching, who's on the mound, and I see here that it's number 29 in this fictional game, so right up here I'm writing the pitcher. Number 29. So anyone who looks at the book can see that number 29 is pitching in the first inning for the Padres. Our first batter coming up to the plate is number 3, Felipe. I'll come back and post his name and position when I get a chance but I want to make sure I'm paying attention. Excuse me. Uh, so let's see. I see the first pitch was a strike, then a foul ball, and then he grounded out to the first baseman. So the first pitch was a strike, then a foul ball, and then he grounded out to the first baseman. The first baseman threw it to the pitcher. So that would be a 3-1 ground out. And that was the first, inning, out, first out of the inning, so I'm going to put a 1 right here and circle that so it's easy for me to see where the first out of the inning occurred. So looking at this box, I can tell how many pitches were thrown to this batter. There were two strikes and then the ground out. So a total of three pitches were thrown to this batter and what I suggest, or what I like to do, is keep a running total of the pitches. So three pitches were thrown to that batter. The next batter, number 30. So right up here, I'm going to put 30. Ball, strike, ball, foul ball, and then ground it out to the second baseman. Ball, strike, ball, foul ball, ground out to the second baseman. That was the second out. And just looking at this box, I can see that this pitcher, number 29, threw one, two, three, four, five pitches to this batter. Two balls, two strikes, and the ball that he hit. So that brings my running total to eight pitches. First three pitches to this batter, five pitches to this batter, which brings my running total to eight. Next batter, number eight. When I have time, I'll come back and fill in his name, but oftentimes when the game is happening, we don't have time to do that. Strike, strike swinging, ball, ground out to the shortstop. And that's the third out of the inning. Just looking at this box, I can see the pitcher threw one, two, three, 
four pitches to this batter, which brings my running total to 12. Now you can write the 12 here, or because it's the end of the inning, you can write the 12 here a little bit bigger so that anyone who looks at this can see that this pitcher threw 12 pitches in this inning. Maybe in the next inning, we'll come through three more batters and the running total will be 30. This way, it's easy to keep track of the number of pitches being thrown, which is very important. Other people will find it easier to keep tally marks on the side. We don't use these uh, special uh, statistics, so sometimes people keep tally marks on the side, and at the end of each inning, will write the innings or the pitches for that inning. Whether you use tally marks, whether you keep a running total, whether you use another person to keep pitch count while you keep track of the balls, strikes, who's on base, whatnot, I need to stress the importance of making sure that accurate pitch counts are taken for every pitcher. At the end of each game, you should be able to ask yourself, can anyone look at my book and, uh, and ascertain who pitched, how many pitches that pitcher threw, as well as what the final score for the game was. So those three items are something that I've noticed in going through our scorebooks are in desperate need of attention. I should be able to go through any book and say easily who pitched, how many pitches that pitcher threw, and what the final score is. So again, we have a thankless job as scorekeepers, keeping track of all of this information. But it is important in terms of making sure that the youth are not overthrowing, which can potentially, potentially lead to lifelong injury. So thank you for watching this video. Feel free to send us an email at alhambra.american at gmail.com with any questions. Thank you.